so that's uh, we started recording. So uh, welcome to the uh, PyScript uh, technical community call on the 10th of September. It's a very um, privileged few uh, who are allowed in this meeting, clearly, uh, although everyone's allowed in, uh, but only us two have turned up. Um, so uh, so it's myself and Andrea, um, and we work at Anaconda on PyScript. Um, uh, and I have to say that Andrea is really rocking the spell check today. Uh, I just noticed what he was doing on the document that we're we're both looking at. So the document we're actually both looking at is uh, the agenda for today. There are no announcements. There are no new people to introduce themselves. Um, we both uh, said that we would um, describe uh, at the beginning of every meeting what we have planned for our next kind of block of work, our next week, what that looks like for both of us. So uh, for me, um, I'm going to mostly be uh, refactoring the PyScript test suite, um, which I'll talk about in a moment, um, as well as planning for the next kind of Anaconda internal things that we need to do as well. Um, so uh, that's what I'm doing. Hey, ah, Martin, hello. Uh, welcome. Uh, is that a glass of manga? Yeah, yeah, I wish it was. <laughs> so we are recording, yes. <laughs> uh, and I've yeah. I, I, and I've basically said hello. Um, I got my cup of tea, uh, and uh, so Andrea, um, what uh, what are you going to be working on over the next week? Uh, so, well, there are a few topics. Um, first of all, I try to reduce to. Not zero because it's not possible, but to, as much as you could, the, the the amount of issues in PyScript.com, um, and uh, what I would like to see is a release sooner than later because there are a few things that are uh, better now, especially when it comes to the Py editor and um, uh, when it comes to uh, if something goes wrong, there is a feedback because before it was on our side a bit too naive like did the config load did the script load did something goes wrong and uh, nothing was communicated properly um I, I will try to unlock some merge requests specifically one that i will discuss later in the agenda item yeah. and um and uh yeah the, the, there were a few issues last week uh most notably the the fact that chrome chromium brave any anything based on chromium browser is basically broken um i'm not saying i'm refreshing every time the list of updates for my os to to be sure that stable 129 comes in or 130 even but we have people in the community in discord that already said okay next version canary or dev version of chrome it's um is gonna work yeah. um because right now we are crashing badly and i just want to be honest to me that was a real 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 red flag uh, in terms of everything so i'm working on something and suddenly everything is broken and it's definitely not our fault and i have no idea besides following all the tickets providing eventually reproducible uh, issues talking to people i don't know how to fix this in the future and that for me was like oh i hope i've provided enough details not just me also other people to to prevent this from happening in the future because WebAssembly WebAssembly is a trusted target platform that we we want to rely on and uh, yeah um I'm, I'm not talking about my current focus but i, I want just to share that I've been puzzling myself with what should we do or how can we prevent this from happening? And there's no answer to that because yeah. if suddenly the browser introduces a bug and that goes to stable, uh, I, I, I think we should try to contact the right people and tell them, hey, please don't make it stable until this kind of test things and WebAssembly and all the, the all the yeah, stacks yeah. that are more complex than just a web page um, pass the test. So uh, then again, uh, there were other few topics and I'm investigating all the topics, including the, um, the ability to have 
somehow uh, any way to provide a um, uh, persistent file system. Um, that's a huge topic that I would like to discuss eventually once I got to the bottom of it. And um, yeah, and uh, what was the other one? Okay. Oh, yeah. There is another uh, another thing that came up today, which, which is about improving somehow a way to improve the template thing in Python. So we have strength template, but that's kind of half baked. Or no, I mean, compared to the JavaScript world, that's um, that's not comparable because it lacks some features and um, and uh, I'm, I'm trying to really get into this 198 conversation uh, people talking about all the things that could go wrong, that could be done in one way or another. And so that's that's part of what I do. I, re I read a lot also, and I'm trying also to validate the fact that all our libraries are, are working properly. So I'm, um, I am I did a bit of a factory with the um, static handler, which is behind Minikoi, which is behind uh, Coincident, and the Coincident also had an update and all these kind of things. Um, but right now I, I, I have an agenda item about something that I would like to understand better from my side as a PyScript contributor, because that, that's about a Python thing that I try to improve. Uh, I had no answer feedback whatsoever so far. So, and, and uh, there were vacations in the middle. Yeah, so yeah. I don't, I'm not blaming anyone, but I would like to discuss that further yeah. down. Okay, well, we'll get, get to that in the agenda items. Uh, so Fabio, I mean, you've, you've kind of joined halfway through as we were saying, well, what we've been up to and what we're about to do this week sort of thing. So, I, yeah. I, I, so I've already been. Um, so we're now onto the agenda items. Um, I want to try and keep the tempo up so that uh, we, we get our time back because I know Fab maybe Fabio, but I certainly have a meeting straight after this one. So, um, you know, we want to make sure we, uh, we're we aware of this. Um, so the first item on the agenda is, uh, please remember the great Pythonic API Bake Off. That's just my kind of weekly reminder about that. You've all heard of it before. So just go take a look at that. Read the things and, 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 and comment. Um, Fabio. Um, yeah, thanks for the reminder. I think this is a great... It's a very important topic. I, I feel like it's dragging mostly because it's been very slow and we've been out like the whole summer thing, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. I think we need to try to force, not force, but at least try to reach agreement by a, a certain time um, or try to see the light at the end of the tunnel, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. If we just... If we don't put deadlines, we're going to yeah. keep speaking for We will for be here in 10 years' time still laughing about, oh, you remember Duke Nukem? Well, that's nothing yeah. compared to... <laughs> I, I, I totally do. agree with you. I totally agree with you. And let's not forget uh, Xanadu, Ted Nelson. Um, anyway, that's been going since the 60s. Um, so, uh, yeah, I totally agree with you. And that's something that I want to try and... Uh, I was hoping to try and do some of that forcing myself this last week, Fabio, but uh, other things got in the way. So I, it's kind of close to my to, top of the to-do list, but things keep bumping it. Um, so so there's that. The, the, the next item is uh, repository organization and test refactoring. Um, so uh, I am going to... Oh, man. Uh, I, okay, bear with me technical hitch here i'm on linux doing this for the first time on linux and recording this meeting with linux i'm going to move discord out of the screen and then share this screen with you so you can see it and so that uh you know everybody will be able to see it on the video as well so let me just uh move that over what could possibly go wrong what could possibly go wrong yeah quite um uh, so I want to uh, share my screen, and I want to share screen one. Go live. So you should be seeing my Visual Studio. Yes? Yep. Good. Okay. And Voco screen hasn't crashed or anything. So um, as you know, I've been working on uh, MicroPyTest. Uh, which is a PyTest API-inspired version of um, a, a, of a test framework that runs on MicroPython and PyDyed in uh, in the browser, really. 
Um, and I was using that to test Invent. Uh, but uh, Andrea and I have been looking at tests and refactoring our test suite because for a start, we had two directories with tests in them, uh, which is never a good idea because you never know what you're testing then. Uh, what's what's What needs to be manually tested because of the way browsers work? What needs to be uh, um, you know automatically tested as an integration test that can be run as part of our CI? Uh, what's tested in JavaScript? What's tested in Python? That sort of stuff is the sort of conversation that we've been having. Okay, um, And I, I, I sat down and I thought, well, could I get uh, MicroPyTest working uh, with PyScript? And it turns out that I can. And so um, what I did is I, I, I've, I have a few things that I'm looking at. There are a number of Python-related tests um, that could be just migrated over. And so what I've looked at are the uh, PyWeb tests, because I'm most familiar with that part of the uh, PyScript standard library. Um, so there are two places where that happens. Uh, this is the old code. This is where um, we use Playwright to uh, instantiate each of the elements that uh, PyScript.web.ui contains and make sure that those elements are all sort of done. And it took quite a while in the order of maybe 20 minutes um, to run uh, because there was a lot going on. And there was another, uh, um, yeah, PyScript.dom, then there was this one here where, you know, you, you get something by ID and you're testing uh, using Py, Py, uh, PyTest here. Um, so what I've done is uh, I've um, taken those two tests and just put them all together in a single file just because it seemed like the sensible thing to do and um, used MicroPyTest. Um, and so this is the whole test suite you could see it's kind of got you know test em test dt all of this sort of stuff all the all all, all the tests uh and it has a single uh, index.html so martin i took all the kind of like divs and all the other sort of assets that you had in your uh index.html and and copied it across i also added a div at the bottom here into which we would inject all the uh elements that uh we were doing with the with the other test suite that was originally run by playwright um the settings is just dead easy. Uh, I don't actually use MicroMock in this. I just kind of copied and pasted it from another project. So we use MicroPyTest uh, version 1.1 and uh, just test web. And so if we go to uh, to um, the uh, browser, uh, that's the test suite running. <laughs> nice. Uh, so it's, Very uh, good. Uh, you know. Can you, can you make this lower, please? Uh, yeah, yes, yeah. I can. So here's an interesting thing. I could go, uh, what is it I need to put? Uh, type. type equals pi. So now it's going to be running that same test suite with pyodide. So we're going to kind of like interval, you know, music going on. Okay, pyodide loaded. And, and that run it in, uh, you know, in, in you know, just as fast. Uh, so 121 pass. And I did that this afternoon. So it didn't take long to do. Um, so we're looking at this uh, right now because, you know, clearly something that takes less than a second uh, to do is going to be more efficient for us, especially if it's more uh, comprehensive and all of that sort of stuff. Uh, so we're looking at that and we're going to, uh, Andre and I spent this morning talking about refactoring the tests directory so that, in fact, if you drop into tests, you get like an index.html that gives you links to all the other things. OK, and you will have um, a directory called manual these contain those very special tests that because of the way browsers work and the way ci works and things you just can't get away with it apart from just clicking on an index.html in a browser and observing with an eyeball mark one that the thing works um and then we'll also have what we're, another directory called integration uh into which all the you know uh automatic uh, you know all the tests that can be done automatically will be put and within that there will be javascript and python so that we can say you know these are the javascript uh, automated tests these are the python automated tests and then we can use ci to run those tests as part of our github process and blah 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 all of that sort of stuff so all of these things in tests are going to be moving around um so that they're in the right sort of a place and all of the tests like for instance in here um uh, will be moved over as appropriate. Uh, these integration tests, I had a look at these. Some of these are really funny. Like they're saying, well, if we put an H1 in a browser, 
assert that a browser displays an H1. I feel that that's kind of a bit out of scope for our tests because if a browser doesn't display an H1, then we're dead. Um, also, they were testing Pyodide uh, features as well. I want to be able to say that we trust our upstream contributors in MicroPython and Pyodide and they have a comprehensive test suite. And of course, we will, <laughs> if we find bugs, send them up the chain, as it were, uh, so folks can, um, you know... Uh, fix their things so that's essentially it uh i'm gonna move uh you all back on camera now wait wait, wait. Okay. fabio, fabio is, uh, is is yeah 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 i'm gonna stop uh sharing hang on a sec how do i stop that hang on. Uh, yeah I, I was trying to wait uh until you were done but I, things have been piling up and i i, I fear i'm gonna lose uh, no 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 go for, it, go, for it, go for it um cool let me okay let me start from the most recent. Uh, plus one on removing tests that are just testing silly things. There, but, and here I'm kind of giving my two cents because a lot of these are actually, Antonio wrote them at first. Um, yeah. Some of those silly tests, they're actually testing that the test framework itself works uh, and it's identifying. So, um, I, I would just be careful with that. Um, yeah. And I think they're mainly concentrated in the, what he was calling zero, zero, like the first ones. I've noticed um, that. Yeah. Yeah. But just, just to share, right? Yeah. Um, there is, um, a no, well, I would like to give a different perspective on testing Pyodide things or MicroPython things. I do think we should not have a comprehensive uh, test suite of those frameworks um, because we should, as you said, we should real, uh, trust the upstream. But in my experience, it's not bad to have a smoke test uh, that tests the major things that they that, or the specific APIs that they're doing. And mostly because we're, we're, we have to do a, a few adapters around it to make MicroPython and Pyodide play well together under the the the, the PyScript API, so I I would definitely want like to keep that part uh, just to make sure that you know the Friday yeah, or Thursday. Really. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Other than this, I think yeah. spot on. I have a bunch of other things, but because I don't want my uh, Andrea to have his arm like I don't feel my hand anymore. Uh, you know, <laughs> you go, Andrea. I don't go back after you. I'm comfortable on my table, so it, it, <laughs> your hand is lucky. Purple. <laughs> yeah, the, the, my, my, the, so we 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 did talk about this, and uh, I, I agree with you. I mean, understanding or relying that the most basic thing works when it comes to test is a is a good thing to have. But at the end of the day, if the the testing framework doesn't work, CI will fail big time. If the Pyodide or MicroPython most basic things won't work, CI will fail big time. So uh, the, the the thing is that in our current list of tests, there are a lot of things that you think, okay, we are just piling up the amount of time to 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 have a green light or something that I'm, I, I mean when you when you type Python, you trust that Python program does something, right? So you don't want to test that Python program does something in your test suite. So that was the kind of things that's like, yeah, if the playwright is broken, we're going to notice it. If everything else is broken, we're going to notice it. And also, it's not like developers just things. They need to test stuff locally so they are sure that the browser works and everything else before pushing the 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 um, uh, merge request so i plus minus one about being h1 is rendered on the browser because if that's not the case i mean if playwright is broken the testing framework the testing thing you don't know if h1 re returns always true or false so it's pointless to test something that is not our domain scope so that's my only uh, yeah, extra I, I, sense on this uh, it's like what are we testing so we should focus on our project and for newcomers we should be sure that every test they see is about our project and not somebody else's project 
And I, if we have issues with Python or MicroPython, uh, PyDad or MicroPython, th then we should file an issue upstream. Yeah, I think I'm going to, if I may, just try and put both of your points together. I, I agree with you, Fabio. That it would be nice to have kind of for regression test reasons, you know, if if uh, PyDad mm -hmm. changes a fundamental API, it would be nice to know that we've got a test that would help us uh, do that. Uh, and try, but also at the same time, it's you know we shouldn't be just testing that the test framework works. Uh, you should trust me. Um, well, pr you probably shouldn't. <laughs> uh, but uh, MicroPyTest has a test suite, and it's documented how do you test a test suite. You don't test it with itself because the test suite itself might have a problem. So you'll see if you look at the MicroPyTest code, it has an extensive test suite that runs all the various different tests so that we can be certain that it is working in the expected way and then we use micro test to test micro mock as well so that we can be certain that that is behaving in the right sort of way so we're kind of like building up levels of trust but it means that if we're going to use micro mock to do a lot of the testing that was originally done with antonio's um test harness thing we can throw away all of his tests that exercise his test harness thing if you see what i mean that can we insert an h1 into a thing sort of uh stuff so the the point is is that it's an opportunity for us to audit and refine and reflect upon the tests that we have because i agree with andrea unsurprisingly because we were talking about it most of the morning that the tests in our test suite should reflect our project and the various aspects of our project so that people aren't kind of like led down the wrong path um, as it were. And the test should be as simple as possible, uh, which is why I like PyTest. It's just simple asserts, really. Andrea, sorry, your arm must be really, really tired resting on that table. <laughs> yeah, no, another quick one. Everything about PyODA, the MicroPython is tested on PolyScript already. So yeah. before it okay. lands on PyScript, it's already, it's already there. Yeah, yeah. So we are testing what's been tested already in PolyScript. So the, this is also one of the reasons I want I really would like to have time to move PolyScript or part of it because not everything in PolyScript is needed in PyScript into PyScript project because otherwise we're testing what has been tested already. And I know that doesn't make sense. I mean, if you want to validate that PyODide works, it's already done before PolyScript dependency runs uh, arrives in PyScript because in PyScript we don't deal directly with PyODide at all neither with MicroPython. So all the tests that have specific things that, are, oh, this doesn't work, this is aggression, this, it will fail already in PolyScript and will be fixed in a, in PolyScript, which is not, which is not about, I mean. <laughs> I've been, I've been using our blue one that is very 80s. So you, you're spot on, anyway. that's perfect. We can. Anyway, that, that's the thing. That's so good. we are testing things that are already, been tested yeah. or if we think these are not tested enough in polyscript side we should test those things in polyscript side because interpreters come from polyscript yeah. not from pyscript yeah. so that's that's another indirection that yeah. we didn't have before so yeah I, I i i agree we should be sure that stuff doesn't uh, work uh, in uh, terms of the, the, the thing we've got to remember we have more. The, the thing we've got to remember just before we go to fabio's yoga session is uh that the the focus that we've had in this quarter and into next quarter is to be able to refactor and tidy up and make sure the quality of the code and all of that sort of stuff and the documentation and the tests and things we're we're lifting it up and that's what that's what this is about uh, so guru uh yoga guru give us a you had your hand up fabio yeah. no uh yeah i just wanted to highlight i i i'm not opposed to removing the h1 testing h1 tests like yeah. at all all i'm saying is some of these and I, i'm pretty sure not all right like some of these were to test the framework itself and basically almost like you have you you should make Trust the test fail you. first you should make Trust the test, test yeah you know uh to, to to try it out and um so that that's really it um so i, I think we can move on from this side um the other thing i wanted to mention i i think you said that but i just wanted to make it very explicit nicholas the proposal would include um it's not only about having the dot index uh the index.html file and running that like we also want to keep uh as many tests as we can 
uh, being automated. Yes. Right. Yes, very much okay. so. Uh, so CI, uh, here's what I want. You know, inevitably, open source contributors don't run the test suite locally because they're at a PyCon or a Sprint or something, and they just they push their their branch, and our CI yeah. should kick in and go. Uh, uh, you know, you've broken something, or they're all. We are analyzing their code in some way using CI capabilities. Going, you've added something, you've not created a test for it, or something like that. You know, all the all the ways that we can use the sort of developer tooling to help us make sure okay. that we we do that. Absolutely, automate the things. Definitely agree with you there. So, to and if it's too early because maybe you haven't looked into it in details yet, that's fine. Um, but I'm just asking. Does that mean the proposal is to kill all the tests that are into in in the many the previous uh, files and bring them as HTML files directly that we test there, or we're we keeping playwrights with the same architecture and stuff like this? Um, and we, well, let me ask: What is the technical proposal there? <laughs> right, it's easier. <laughs> It, so being able to test both, sorry, sorry, uh, Nicholas. No, no, I, no, go for it. I know what you're going leave to the room so you <laughs> Being able to test both in CI and locally, because that's what I do <laughs> when we have bugs, yeah. um, is, is not mutually exclusive. So we are trying to find a sweet spot where we can have both. So we have the CI running the entirety of the test suite that that are working right now and uh, the meaningful one or whatever we want to put in there because it's so fast right now so we can even have the h1 thing <laughs> but uh, the, the 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 reason i created a parallel integration js test thing is because i want to be able with my browser and my console debugger and everything else to understand exactly what's going on which is not provided by playwright because playwright is a browser instance apart and it does its own thing as a browser instance apart so yes that, that, can, I, can i stop it real quick because yeah. that is exactly why i'm asking too right you 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 said exactly one of the things i had in mind right now we, when you run the integration tests it goes over the, the many python files right each one of them basically do instantiate the the um, the page and then we basically put the python code there and then run right and a few others are basically taking content from an H external html file the nice thing about that is that actually those are being automated as well but if i want to i can just manually test them in the browser so that is a, a, a nicer approach from the developer point of view because you have to do the, the two options, right? That, that's a minority of tests, though. So the the majority of tests is just the strings, triple quoted strings in 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 some Python code that I cannot easily copy and paste in a in a template or I could, but that's not ideal when it comes to developing because I want to be sure that I can reproduce that thing and I and I, I want to want to be sure that that thing works. So to me, yeah. it's like about speeding up the bugging time and investigation time is like i don't want to dig into our test suite in python inside strings to find out what i should copy and paste in my own template somewhere else that is that is exactly my point yes yes exactly yes we are all in violent agreement all in violent agreement okay this is good this is so what you're saying what i'm here what i'm hearing is that as part of this effort yes we want to strip out as many of those strings as external files yes and we can run them Yes, perfect. Yes, yes. Awesome. so separate yeah. tests in a in a like a PyTest type thing using MicroPyTest. And also yeah. we also but discussed yeah, it, so you know, we file. use a make file as well. So if you are local, you can make test and it will run all the automated tests for you. And when we're on CI, all CI does is run make test and it does the exactly the same thing. So uh, you yeah, can you forgot that. the snappy, the snappy way. Yeah. yeah. The snappy way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Zero point something. I'm not I'm not I'm not sure at the end of this journey it will be still zero point, but whatever is going to be less than... It'll be uh, faster than half an hour, I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Well, I, we, We've been talking about testing. We've got 
uh, 25 minutes left before I, I know I and perhaps Fabio have to have to leave. Um, so the next item on the agenda, if nobody else has anything more to, to ask or say about testing, I think we've kind of well exercised that uh, that agenda item. So the next one is Andreas kind of stuck merge request and that's merge request 2151, which is I think what you were talking about earlier. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, wait, I, I lost because I'm full screen. I lost my window. So can I share my screen? Yeah, go for it. Please. Let me try from the full screen. It already didn't work. Keeps not working. Wait, wait, wait a minute. All right. Uh, right. Can you see my screen? Nope. Oof. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing then and I'm gonna. I'll be back in a second. Okay. Actually, I never left. <laughs> I, hear you. Still... <laughs> I still hear you. You're still so, there. Yes. We can hear you. <laughs> Adria. <laughs> Hello, and also my mic was off. <laughs> What's going on? Okay, let me try again. Can you see? your inception uh yeah things coming through now oh lovely Perfect. sound i love this so yeah this is hello. nothing oh hello yeah we can hear you and we can see you you're good you're good yeah, yeah, yeah you're good yeah i don't i don't see you so sorry i don't see you um so it's nothing urgent to be honest but it's just about I, I i try to <laughs> to put uh martin nicholas so this was a request from from uh, uh, an improvement from uh this discussion there was this discussion and i, I i'm not folks i'm not blaming any of you but it's like how do we go from a discussion where a user is saying something that at least to me sounds right and it makes sense in terms of dom I create a merge request and uh, the file change is minimal and uh, I'd love to have this <laughs> validated by one of the folks, any of the folks that wrote this um, dumb, dumb WebPy implementation. So it's super simple, but it does the right thing. So if I can quickly explain what it does, basically the original concern from, from this discussion is that when you and maybe there was an example let me check the discussion again so you can see it so when no there's no example i hate when that happened but basically when um when we use the show me more too much um when we use the uh, inner dot html to add child in in things, and we could have here a DOM element, for instance. Um, if anyone passes a DOM element to the um, to any container element, because the DOM element is known already. So in this case, whenever we do these, we're basically trashing whatever was there before and recreating the the whole, uh, whole new tree of HTML nodes from from the scratch so if i pass um uh, no element. it's not dom it's not dom element the dom element is the element itself that is args so it, uh, all the ch children that right. you want to add right. oh, yeah, yeah 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 you're right so mm -hmm. args is part of the children um what whenever we do this so i don't know if if i should give yeah, you a the, quick more about this but basically whenever you do in HTML dot equals something it reconverts the entirety of the dom into a string and it reparse the entirety of the dom plus the child as a string and so this is ugly because we have we have this issue in the on the web and that's the reason insert edges adjacent html 
So you can add some HTML at the end of that of a DOM element instead of retrashing and recreating things. Because if the DOM has an element by ID, for instance, that you trapped somewhere else and you try to reach that element, that element doesn't exist anymore the moment this happens. And if that element was part was part of the children or somehow was part of the 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 the, the self and uh, the inner HTML dot child plus equal child happens so this is both slow um not ideal because on the parsing side the html parser has to reparse the entirety of the thing yeah. so this is exactly you know that yeah. this is a self dot inner html is equal self dot inner html so whatever as self transform into string as a html and then plus that child and then reparse everything and you lose all the references all the listeners and everything else into the into the yeah. dom so so, so rather I than recreating the universe every time from a string what we want to yeah, do is just yeah. yeah manipulate the actual dom itself which is what insert adjacent html does for us yeah which is what insert adjacent html does so it doesn't trash what what's there already it just append new html to the element and so this was super simple super easy i never got a chance to talk about this but is there any reason this merge request shouldn't go through because this would solve um both some performance in in the pi uh pi web um web.py uh, file and also it, it doesn't trash references all over the place every single time I've just approved so it. yeah okay um quick so uh, well no i want to be sure that i'm, I'm reaching the right i'm doing the right thing so it's something yeah. okay plus so, one from me i i would check on the append method as well uh, i don't remember i think we use something different but we may need to change the fix as well. I've looked well. for HTML plus equal something, and I think this is the only thing I spotted. Okay. But then, before perfect. merging, perfect. before merging, I will double check. That's not the case. But I think this is the only place we have, um, where we have this. And I don't know if it's because init is re-invoked. I, I don't know what's going on. But the the um, the, the, the explanation here reason so if you do this any elements that are already here will be completely replaced by fresh ones uh properties that are local to those elements such as event list learn lost and, and i think this user had already a use case for this and he already opened a discussion because he thought okay this is something that doesn't work and he suggested create text node which wouldn't work neither because it's not about text it's about injecting actually extra html and so i think this um this is the right fix to do and even if that that doesn't fix the original user concerns it fixes the fact that we we are doing the best the best thing we can from the dom api and so i hope um this works, but again, I will double check in HTML dot plus equals something uh, is not used anywhere else. But I think I did check that already. And so thanks. Fantastic. That's all. Okay, so we're done. No, thank you. Okay, um, awesome. I think there we go. Live coding. Uh, sorry, Martin. So, so there's two things there. First, yeah, first of all, plus one on that change because it does the right thing. But also, it's understanding what the you. I'd love to know what their use case is, right? Because you got to remember that there's two things that we're doing here. One is we either wrap existing elements or we're creating new ones. That's the point of PyScript.web, right? So in this particular case, if you pass a DOM element in, that means we're wrapping an existing DOM element. So if, I think, I think the answer the is here. So if the child in the args is an element, we append the child. This is already yeah. parsed passed as an as an element the moment we do this whatever child before was appended that reference got get get lost because the append child this reference is lost forever the moment we do this right after that child the previous child got appended yes. so if you have child list args and the child is a dom element and after you have a chunk of html oh, that yeah. dom element here is okay, I, get, I under yes I, 
I understand the technical, and yes, I agree, 424 is correct, right? So it stops yeah. that thing. But all I'm saying is I'm interested in their use case because I think the way that we had it originally, this was originally just a convenience so that when you're creating um, mm -hmm. new elements, you can just use basically t put a text string in first. So you can just say paragraph and put a bit of text. So it's so it's yeah, so I we guess wrote this, we wrote this. So we allow child <laughs> the arts as an element. So the moment we do this is the moment we we're better off. Yes. Uh, uh, without this. Oh, yeah. We, the, I, 424 <laughs> totally seems technically the correct way of doing it. Right. It's yeah, just I'm, that... I'm explaining you the moment we allow child to be not just string or chunk of HTML, but also an element is the moment we allowed this thing to fail and we should we should just do this and oh, yeah. you see okay okay fabio go 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 <laughs> no no no. i was going to say you see the the yoga session gave us telepathy because yeah. i'm pretty sure we're going to say some <laughs> this I'm, just say, I'm just saying i'm i was about to say i don't know about you fabio but let's bet on it uh, i was just about to say we've got 15 minutes left of this and there's one item left i want to make sure that we respect fabio's time to be able to just kind of you know say the things that he yeah. say. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no that's perfect uh, to close that yes i was going to say this and i think you guys are talking about andre is talking about uh watermelons and, and uh, uh, martin is talking about bananas uh i think you're talking about different layers right yeah. i think martin is talking about the layer where what should we do at the python level to uni to make it easy to add arbitrary elements and it's it's strings and when you have a query from the DOM and you pass the proxy or whatever it is. Anyway, I don't want to spend more time on this. I, I do think you, you guys are in agreement just talking in different levels. Um, it's about uh, references. Oh, yeah. yeah, references and not losing references. So to me, it's, uh, it's pretty simple. OK. Yeah that, yeah, that change. That change is good, right? But that wasn't what I was talking about. Yeah. The change is great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So on that note, we're once again in violent agreement about everything, which is why I love working with everybody here. Uh, with the last item on our agenda is Fabio, community engagement, refresher, and Q4 opportunities. So Fabio, uh, off you go, matey. Um, thank you. I, I'm going to be quick, and I don't think we... This is not a topic for us to decide anything right here. Um, it's more like things are... We're doing the planning for Q4, and we, we want to identify areas where we want, want to improve. And there is the ongoing effort with uh, Bogdan and Dasha on you know engaging better and, and more with the community. We are also been tr trying to prioritize some of that for PyScript.com as well, right? And that's Anaconda stuff out of this call. Um, I just want to make sure that we are working together to make those two kind of match or, or at least help compliment, each other complement each other yeah compliments yeah. perfect that's the word and also very selfishly uh i <laughs> have that's a... not even a word fabio <laughs> selfishly whatever how do you say in a selfish way how do you say that in english selfishly. in a selfish way selfishly selfishly it's way easier he didn't he said selfishingly <laughs> exactly <laughs> yes 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 uh uh, I, you know, just as an outing thing, I, I really feel like, have you ever seen the name of the rose? Salvatore, yeah. the guy that speaks all languages at once. I feel like the more I age, the more I feel like that poor, poor guy. Anyway, um, I, I, had... I, I, I corrected the Nicholas this morning while he was typing. So I feel like the circle is closed. Oh, now you're squared. Now it's yeah the circle squared anyway anyway <laughs> anyway i i have uh three or four talks coming up i i'm pretty sure folks here and others in the team have talks coming and i'd love for us to think about how can we use those opportunities to actually collect feedback and when there there's more even more important i would love to come prepared when people say hey can we pair on this or can we do a sprint or things like this so that we have a structure right I, as a project i think that would be super powerful yeah that's it that's the topic yeah and, and i hear you 
Fabio because I I saw that at PyCon this last year. People turned up and said, we want to sprint on PyScript. And I was like, well, it's mostly written in JavaScript. Uh, and they were like, oh. Um, now, there are bits that are written in Python, and we should point them to that, and we should have like beginner tickets and things. But this is why we want to refactor the, the the repository so that it's it's obvious to any Python Easter who happens to drop by that this is the Python side of things. This is where you put the Python test. This is the process that you go through to create a pull request for Python updates. Same for JavaScripters who might turn up because we we I don't know why I'm explaining this to you folks, but just for posterity, you know, PyScript has its feet in both the Python world and the web world, and we need to be able to cater to both. And 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 that's what this ongoing work is is there for is to is to help those folks engage because. You know, we want as many people to be feel welcome as possible. Um, any more on that? Because I know how tacit no. we all are. <laughs> yeah, I think only I really wanted to drop that there. Maybe we can talk better next week, etc. After talking about it, the other thing it's slightly related is actually it's not related, but I'll just throw it there. Um, I think uh, Chris mentioned the. Um, the um, ah, what's his name? Uh, the name of the project. Um, the spreadsheets. Oh my pie god, sheets, pie sheets. Chris Lafra, huh? Chris Lafra, pie, Chris sheets. pie sheets, pie sheets. Yes, pie sheets is now open source. Yeah, and he did a lot of small, cool things that I think could be cool. Um, even just from uh, I'm not sure we're using code, but from a best practices perspective and, and how is his, his testing performance and things. The trade the the switch between MicroPython and Pi and Pyodide, I think we can reuse a lot for the community itself as, as a good material. So just throwing that as well out there um, as, as something. Like for instance, could be totally if we organize things well that could be a topic a working topic on a sprint right like as uh, go this dissect this or uh take this part as a third party library and whatever i don't think as PyScript core but more as like ecosystem there's there's a bunch of opportunities there andrea so the secret sauce there is is about using micropython on the main thread and pyodide in the worker which was the mm -hmm. original idea about enabling workers and uh, we probably haven't stressed that enough in our documentation. Our examples are not using that, are not doing that. So there's surely room for improvement in our in our case to promote this approach because that's the, that, that that's probably the approach that works. So you arrive, you land on MicroPython on the page, you don't feel like you have to wait two seconds before seeing anything. You you just see the pie sheets things, and when more complicated stuff happens, it happens behind the scene without blocking the main thread. And I think that's the that's the really the the best usage of our current project at at, at the moment. So okay, definitely I... something we should improve in in uh, promoting this approach out there. Okay, so I'm I must apologize for being a bit chairish, but. Um, I don't know. Uh, we, we all know what I'm about to say. Uh, we, we've come to the end of uh, end of the meeting. Um, uh, I've got a call in five minutes, uh, which I'll need to go to. Um, and I know other people do. Um, is there anything very, very briefly that we've missed that we need to just touch upon right now? Otherwise, I can stop the recording and call the meeting until a close. I'm seeing thumbs up from Fabio. I'm not hearing anything else. So I'm going to I'm going to stop the recording.